Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to Netmaster Zone and uh, welcome to a new video uh, from CCNA series. Uh, before starting the video, uh, let's uh, first go to uh, our uh, Cis uh, Cisco CCNA uh, blueprint and uh, check that uh, what portion actually uh, we create a video for uh, we uh, just created um, some video about the layer 2 layer 3 uh, a little bit about router and uh, also the endpoint servers uh, different uh, uh, architecture of the network and uh, also about uh, if you see here that we uh, create about uh, uh, we had a video about trunking 802.1q native vlans and so on uh, but uh, of course some portion is left here and i'm going to create a video about that especially for the part of uh, uh, ipv4 the subnetting and also uh, ipv6 uh, and uh, also subnetting of this and prefixes uh, for this, um, let's. Um, I just decided to first finish the uh, layer two portion, and then we can go for this uh, layer three, and uh, we'll start with the IP v4 subnetting. Uh, in this video, I'm going to speak about the uh, switching concept, actually portion uh, 1.13, and uh, for that, uh, let's uh, first speak about the MAC address learning and aging. Uh, uh, let's go to the uh, our presentation and then uh, we will speak about them later okay first uh, it's about the switching concepts actually before switch it was a device called hop i'm sure uh, all of you just uh, hear a name about that and the hop was a uh, uh, something like switch let me show you here this is a switch uh, but um, assume that it's up it's actually exact the same uh, has the same uh, view and uh, but the, the actual uh, work functionality of the hub is uh, much different uh, in compared to switch actually the hub is a layer one and it's not a layer two device it means that it doesn't uh, have any mac address and uh, forwarding the frames not the frames the packet i can say because frames is um, uh, actually uh, it's a layer 2 bpdo not uh, not a layer 1 bpdo uh, then uh, let's say a packet for example this uh, port 1 uh, it's a computer connected to a computer and that computer wants to send a uh, packet to uh, port 5 for example here in this case when this packet come to this hub the hub will just uh, broadcast that uh, packet to all this port except the port that he uh, re received that packet in this case all this uh, computer will receive that packet and uh, it's not actually a good uh, um, practice because uh, security reason if we think just all this computers will receive that packet and it's not good and uh, the second thing that uh, actually it's created a huge traffic that uh, uh, it's not actually news and also we also uh, you may hear about the uh, CDMA CD and the CDMA CA CDMA CD carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance and uh, carrier sense multiple access with collision detection and um, hope actually is trying to detect the collision for example two computers from this hub is trying to send the frame again uh, a packet in the same time uh, in this case a collision will happen inside this hub and then uh, this hub detect that co collision and try to uh, stop sending any tr traffic and then give a time and that's it uh, uh, that is a very old concept and i don't want to speak about that but the switch actually it's a layer two it's using the mac address and also i can say it's a collision uh, avoidance it's avoiding the collision because it's just sending this frame to the um, port that is necessary uh, okay let's get back uh, to um, our presentation here uh, you can see we uh, speak about the mac address we said about the layer 2 devices but we never said what is the mac address actually the mac address the media access control uh, is a unique address for a device who have a capability to connect to a network for example um, 
I have a computer and my computer has this capability to connect to a network. Uh, I have a phone and my phone is uh, are capable to uh, connect to a network. Uh, then uh, this uh, devices should have a MAC address and this MAC address is a unique and as you see it's a 48 bits and the first uh, three bytes it means uh, um, first uh, um, 24 bit of that it's a, a OUI organization unit identifier and what is this organization unit identifier uh, we speak about the IEEE before uh, the IEEE organization Institute of uh, Electric and Electronic Engineering and uh, that institute actually uh, providing this the first uh, three uh, byte of the MAC address and why the IEEE should do that because uh, as I said, it's a unique identifier. It should be unique. If everyone try to make a MAC address and uh, it may be a MAC address same in many devices. But if it's uh, going to be uh, uh, provided by a unique organization like uh, um, IEEE, then uh, this uh, first three uh, byte will uh, given by the IEEE. Then uh, every organization just receive this three byte and then the organization knows that I have this three bytes but I, j I can change this uh, three other bytes to create a, a different uh, um, address from uh, actually uh, my old devices. Uh, you can see here that uh, I just divide that to a binary and uh, it's a 48 bits and every portion has a 8 uh, 48 bits every portion has 8 bits and uh, uh, at all it's uh, 6 byte okay uh, now I we know that what is the MAC address and uh, you can see here I just bring the um, picture of the switch and also a, a LAN card here and every port of this switch has its own unique address it means that uh, it may uh, it may know it's uh, of course all this uh, uh, port the first three bytes uh, are the same but the second three bytes of course they are will be different if you have any physical switch you can check the MAC address of that and uh, you, you will see that the first three bytes are the same in that uh, uh, switch uh, but uh, it doesn't mean that it should be same in all the uh, Cisco switches for example because switch has many products and uh, of course it has many uh, unique identifier organization unique identifier that you receive from the IEEE uh, for switches for ASS firepowers um, I, uh, um, IP phones and many many other devices and also you can see here it's a LAN card and uh, I believe it's uh, belong to a server and uh, it has three po uh, four ports and uh, every port of course has a unique uh, MAC address and uh, will be known with that MAC address. Okay, uh, let's go uh, to the MAC address learning actually. What is the MAC address learning and uh, why this MAC address learning is very important here? Okay, uh, let's go to diagram and uh, see uh, what is actually the MAC address learning. Uh, I just create this uh, topology that you may see in the previous video. Uh, I just create it back to the EVNG. Uh, for those who uh, want to know what is the EVNG, you can find a complete uh, video of downloading and installation and configuration of EVNG. Uh, this uh, actually this software uh, can uh, emulate the iOS, uh, Cisco iOS and uh, uh, can give you the um, real uh, view of the switch in the command line and it's supporting all commands it's not like a, a pocket tracer uh, just as a simulator and I just created it here because uh, it has a better behavior in compared to the um, pocket tracer uh, okay, before uh, see the MAC address table of this uh, switch, uh, let's uh, uh, go to the PC1 and try to ping in the VLAN 10. Okay, I'm going to ping uh, 192.168.10.101. This is PC2, uh, then 102 and 103. 
and now uh, I should have the MAC address table of all this uh, uh, PC inside this uh, switch okay let's go to this uh, switch here and uh, let's uh, see uh, show MAC address table in the MAC address table you can see that uh, now uh, for PC actually it's connected to VLAN 10 and uh, they are uh, added uh, in this uh, MAC address table and two of them is connected to Ethernet uh, 0 by, uh, by 2 and 0 by 3 you can see 0 by 2 and 0 by 3 this two PC when a PC try to send the traffic from uh, source to destination for example here PC1 is going to send a uh, traffic uh, frame to uh, PC1 uh, let me show you uh, what is the frame actually I have a frame here you can see that uh, this is a frame and it has a source and destination and also data uh, when a PC try to send something to another PC, it's uh, divide that into different frame and uh, uh, this frame has a source and destination. This source and destination actually is the source and destination MAC addresses uh, because it's a frame, it's layer 2 and uh, when it, this frame comes to this switch, this switch actually open the frame and uh, attach the uh, source uh, MAC address to the port that it received that frame. For example here when I ping uh, from PC1 and um, it's just uh, uh, I don't know which MAC addresses belong to PC1 let me check uh, of course the, I can see the port here uh, this one and uh, let's check that this is the uh, MAC address of this PC or not show IP and 6803 uh, 6803 and this is connected to uh, port 02 it means that uh, when this frame is come to this switch switch just open the frame and just attach the uh, source MAC address to the uh, port that it uh, received that frame uh, from that port and then uh, because in the first this switch doesn't have any uh, MAC address it doesn't know anything about the uh, destination of this uh, frame then uh, it's float the uh, frame to all these uh, ports and of course this uh, all this PC will receive that and because there is no destination MAC address uh, uh, to that frame this other PC will uh, just uh, destroy the packet uh, but that packet also will uh, transfer through this port channel here and, and this switch is sent it to uh, PC8 and PC8 uh, just received the frame and open the frame and then you see that uh, the uh, destination uh, that frame is uh, for himself and then he just reply back when it reply back and that reply come to this switch this switch again open the frame and uh, check the source and destination this time the source is the PC8 and uh, it just uh, received that uh, frame from the port channel 1 and then it just attached that uh, MAC address to this port channel 1 uh, this time uh, switch actually knows about the um, uh, destination because when it received that frame it just attached the uh, MAC address of this PC on this port and now this time this uh, p uh, switch doesn't uh, flow the traffic to all these ports it just send the traffic to the port uh, that uh, uh, is the destination actually and uh, you can see here that we have two uh, MAC address actually is uh, connected to port channel 1 and uh, uh, this is the um, uh, MAC address of this two PC this is for PC 7 and this one is uh, for PC 8 because we just sent the ping packet from this PC to this PC also uh, and uh, okay let's get back here this is the MAC address learning it means that the switch just uh, uh, add the MAC address of the source and destination on the relevant port and the next time when the packet comes and uh, now the switch knows about the uh, ports and will uh, send the traffic to the uh, exact port not to forward it to all other ports then what is the MAC address aging time uh, this aging time actually uh, 
is um, the time that the amount of time that this uh, uh, MAC address actually uh, stay in the MAC address table and uh, it depends uh, by default it's uh, 300 seconds uh, but we can change it from 0 to uh, 1 million seconds uh, 0 means that uh, it's just disabled the MAC address aging and the MAC address will just uh, uh, remove and this is not actually a good practice because every time if a switch receive a packet then you need to flow that to uh, all ports uh, it's good to um, put the MAC address aging time to 2 or 3 hours and in this case uh, uh, the MAC address will be uh, available in this uh, uh, switch for two hours or three hours and uh, of course the uh, MAC address table is limited because uh, it's belong to the uh, memory of the switch if uh, we don't have enough uh, memory in the switch the MAC address table will automatically delete and will be replaced with the new MAC address that is required let's see the MAC address aging time here uh, show MAC address table MAC address table aging time and here you can see that uh, um, the global uh, aging time is uh, I believe it's three hours I just changed that and also for VLAN 10 it's uh, 300 and for VLAN uh, 20 is uh, um, 500 minutes, uh, seconds and uh, we can change this aging time uh, depend to the uh, VLAN of course uh, let's do that uh, conf t uh, then mac address aging time uh, for example let's make it uh, 2000 seconds uh, for vlan 10 and also make it uh, 2000 seconds for vlan 20 and let's make it 1000 for uh, vlan uh, 30 okay let's make it 2000 for vlan 30. Now do show MAC address table aging time and you can see that uh, we have different time for our different VLANs here. Okay let's get back to the presentation and uh, see what we have in the next slide okay frame switching in the frame switching what's actually the frame switching uh, frame switching uh, it's uh, done with uh, uh, three different concepts I can say the cut through switch or frame uh, fragment free switch and a store and forward the cut through means what when we uh, actually uh, just send the uh, frame from uh, PC to the switch uh, the um, switch actually uh, store that frame on the memory and then open that frame and uh, check if the frame is uh, uh, correct for example if we have we, uh, the uh, switch receive a damage uh, uh, frame it doesn't make sense to actually forward that frame to the destination and uh, in this case uh, actually uh, uh, switch optimize everything uh, because the only the correct traffic will be sent to the this uh, to the destination not the garbage uh, uh, traffic because if the frame is damaged then it will go to the destination and the destination will destroy that then there is no make sense to send this uh, um, frame to the destination and that is uh, called the cut, uh, cut through and also the uh, fragment free is the same concept uh, but in the fragment free uh, actually the switch uh, uh, just check the first 64 byte of the frame uh, because the most uh, error actually occur uh, in the first 64 uh, bit of the uh, 64 byte of the frame and if that 64 byte of the frame is correct then the switch just uh, uh, forward that uh, frame to the destination and also if we speak about the store and forward is the same uh, it just uh, storing that uh, 
in the in the memory and then open that find the source and destination as i said uh, just attach source uh, on the port that it received this frame from and then check the destination if that destination is available in the uh, switch then it will uh, send that to uh, that destination to that port if it's not in the available in the um, switch then it just followed it uh, to all ports of the uh, switch Okay, next uh, again, uh, frame floating. As I said, if there is any um, MAC address available in the MAC address table, the destination MAC address actually, if it's available in the MAC address table, uh, then it just send it to that port. If the destination uh, MAC address is not available in the MAC address table, uh, then it just followed it to all uh, port, except the port actually, uh, it's received that frame. And uh, in the next time when the, uh, uh, PC just reply back and uh, now this uh, switch knows uh, the destination is connected to which port then add that uh, MAC address to that port and next time when we uh, just send the packet to uh, send the frame to uh, the PC this time the switch knows uh, the uh, exact uh, port of that uh, destination and just uh, forward the traffic to that port not to follow the to all other ports here and then uh, mac address table as we said uh, the mac address table uh, sometimes is called as address addressable memory or cam content addressable memory and uh, it's a uh, memory inside the uh, switch and uh, just uh, uh, actually switch as a um, MAC address table and separate that MAC address table for different VLANs. Uh, for example, in this diagram uh, that we have uh, uh, three VLANs, then it just uh, knows uh, the VLAN also. For example, this PC is trying to send the traffic to this one and uh, uh, this switch doesn't have any um, port for any MAC address uh, to forward that in this case it doesn't flood it to uh, VLAN 20 or VLAN 30 uh, be, uh, because he knows that its uh, traffic is belong to VLAN 10 and it just followed it to this uh, uh, port uh, belong to VLAN 10 and also this port that is uh, a trunk port and he knows that it may be connected to this one uh, okay, uh, this is the MAC address table and uh, uh, it's a memory and it's limited uh, sometimes uh, when the uh, MAC address table become full then uh, it just uh, remove uh, that MAC address, the old MAC address table, uh, MAC address from the table and then add the new uh, MAC addresses that is required for the switch. Uh, okay, uh, let's go to this uh, diagram and let's uh, check something else in here. Uh, actually, uh, we saw, I believe, everything here, uh, but uh, let's do it again. Uh, let's go to PC3 uh, and try to ping uh, VLAN uh, 20 here. It's 192.168.20.101 and uh, 102 and 103 now uh, we should have the mac address table here uh, let's check uh, show mac address table uh, just uh, check for vlan uh, 20 and you can see that we have four uh, pc here that is uh, two of them is connected to uh, ethernet ports and two of them is connected to uh, port channel one um, it means that uh, uh, this mac address of these two pc is connected to these two interfaces and now uh, these two pc is connected to uh, the uh, uh, port channel and if we go to the uh, second floor uh, also here we can check the mac address area uh, show MAC address table uh, for VLAN 20 and here you can see uh, that these two ports actually is connected to, to Ethernet uh, 
and uh, to this two PC and uh, only one we have here because we just uh, send the ping from one PC and uh, now this switch only knows the uh, MAC address of uh, this PC3 not the PC4 and if uh, now uh, this PC try to uh, send the packet to PC4 uh, because uh, the, this PC doesn't know about the MAC address of the PC4 here uh, then it just floated uh, to uh, this port because it belongs to VLAN uh, 20 and also this port channel and then this port channel uh, will come here and now uh, this PC because it, it has the MAC address of this it doesn't uh, float it it just send it uh, directly to the port that the PC4 is connected okay it was all about the concept of the uh, MAC address table and also uh, we just uh, uh, actually we just finished this part here and it was all uh, about this uh, part uh, okay uh, in the next video we are going to continue our videos uh, and uh, uh, please uh, follow us uh, for the new video in the uh, netmaster zone channel and uh, please subscribe us and also uh, please uh, uh, click on the bell uh, to uh, receive the uh, actually uh, new update from the uh, video that I'm going to upload in the channel. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next video.